Good evening, known world. I am Excellency Rambut Al Taiba, coming to you live from the Kingdom of Artemisia with the assistance of His Excellency Cal Barter and KK Productions, um, so that we can get together and travel down this road to retention. Um, tonight, we are blessed to have uh, accompanying us to discuss this topic, uh, Sir Giovanni Orsini <laughs> de Venetia. <laughs> Sorry, you know, you and I can never say each other's names right. <laughs> Sergio, would you please introduce yourself? <laughs> I am, uh, I'm Giovanni Orsini de Venetia. Um, I am a uh, 15th century uh, Venetian, Venetian merchant. Uh, I know I don't look like it right now. I do apologize. Well, I'm from Artemisia. I am technically sitting in North Shield right now. I uh, attended uh, Supercon today with my, the last three days with my daughter. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I could have borrowed a costume from her, but I don't think I could dress as Technoblade on this. I don't think that would have worked. Um, I mean, I, <laughs> it is October. <laughs> it is October, you know. Well, I don't think I can get away with the crown. I have to win one of those myself. Um, oh, true. I, uh, yes. Uh, uh, just some quick background about my time in the SCA. Uh, I went to my first event back in 92. At the time, I owned a, a little store that a lot of SCAers purchased stuff at beads, crystals, uh, all sorts of it's a cool little imported items. And they asked us to merchant at an event. And that event happened to be a, um, a list for our prince of our principality at the time. And I went, and matter of fact, before my first event, I had my, my name and my persona, you know, and time period and everything because, well, I was going to be merchanting and I was selling beads and I loved the history of beads. So it became very easy. And the best beads were made in Venice and during the 15th century. So I became, and it just, it rolled really fast. And so I'm one of those weird people that has actually known who's going to be the entire time I've been in. And uh, at that event, I saw the fighting and I was hooked. I also found out that the lady I was dating at the time, uh, I was asking her if she wanted to go and she, she needed us to make a costume for her. And she said, oh no, I'll just wear one of my Gawazi coats. And I'm like, what's a Gawazi coat? Because I wear it when I belly dance. And I'm like, you belly dance and uh, i also became a huge <laughs> fan of belly dance at that time as well so, <laughs> so uh, that uh, that was way back in 1992 and i've uh, been playing uh uh fairly strong ever since so um it's a lot of fun and uh over those years i've held a number of officer positions and uh official and unofficial but definitely uh i think i've been an officer for 20 years of the almost 30 i've been in so uh, and uh I just uh, I love helping the group grow and love helping keep in the group. And I just love uh, I love uh, showing people how to enjoy what we do and uh, to learn more about it and just get involved. So I, I'm happy to be here. Gina and I, uh, Ramut and I have known each other for a long time so, <laughs> and uh, uh, since last century. And uh, she was in high school when we first met uh, and um, back in 93, I think we figured out it was. It yeah. Was about, I've been playing about a year or so. So um, we go back a ways. And uh, <laughs> so that's probably enough about my background. Now, you were you had some questions you want to toss at me and then we go from there? Well, you know, I do have some questions. Um, I know that you have a, a background with business and marketing and, and have different kind of strategies that you implement in that realm. What yeah. are the business strategies that you carry over to the SEA for retention? And recruitment. Oh, okay. Well, just like um, just like when you're in a business, you need to keep everybody excited about the day to day stuff. It's everything becomes routine after a while, and you have to keep people excited about it. Within the SCA, we all it becomes routine to us as well, and we forget that. We forget, especially those of us who have been playing, you know, since last century, um, <laughs> that uh, we forget the eyes. You know what it's like when we first came in. We all forget that, and the key to retention is for us to see that more often and for us to get that ourselves. And maybe some, some of us, we need to, now when I'm, when we're working with people in a business, what you do is you make sure that, you know, they understand what they're doing. If they're not, if they're not enjoying what they're doing, maybe you find other jobs for them. Well, in the SCA, if somebody is getting stagnant in one thing, you talk to them and see what else they might be interested in learning and introduce them to those people. It's exactly the same thing you do with somebody who's new, 
But sometimes those of us that have been in it a while, we kind of get stuck doing what we're doing. And maybe we just need to kick, you know, get a swift kick and reminded why we <laughs> love this and get drug into something else and try something else. I think that I think that too often we get into the one that, you know, it's like I just fight heavy or or I just do scribal arts or, you know, and so we get too stuck in that sometimes and we need to go dip our toes in other things. I mean, that's why a and you know, when we have A&S events, it's so much fun because you have lots of different classes. And mm -hmm. if somebody has been playing for a while, I strongly recommend they go sit through some classes of stuff that they've never done before. And just to check it out, you know, maybe they've, maybe they've never done rapier, so go to a rapier class. Maybe they've never done scribal, go to a scribal class. Anything that they haven't done, just go check that out so they can learn more about it. And in this last year and a half, even though it's been so tough for us to do a lot of stuff together face to face, What's been amazing about this last COVID year and well, 17 <laughs> years, whatever the heck it's been, um, is the amount of stuff that's come out online. You know, things Agreed. like this that have come. I mean, it's been amazing. So many things we can learn. So many great artisans have shared amazing stuff online that it's really given us. Uh, it's given us new things to learn. And what people were always putting stuff on before, the the rush of content that came online in the last year and a half has been tremendous so anybody that really wants to learn anything we can point them in the right direction now even if we don't I mean, have it locally it was such a huge explosion and opened so many different doors for all of us during this year and a half and i think I, I, mean, I hope um that it continues definitely you know with everybody's different personalities and how much exposure to crowds it kind of yeah. allows those people who are pretty shy to definitely blossom and bloom Oh, some of our best artisans are, are very introverted and um, and they really, it really gives them an opportunity to share in a, you know, they can be sitting in their living room just with a camera. And a lot of people don't, you know, that's the beautiful thing about this. I mean, some people hate the camera, but really when it's your phone or just your laptop, it's not as bad. And people were more willing to share that way. So even introverted people, I think, tend to do much better in this type of environment. Well, and there's so many more platforms, like ways to show your art online versus going and entering a, a in-person competition or entering a display, which makes it so much more catered to comfort level. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't yeah, feel awkward I mean, about it. Right. Because I mean, well, some people never want to see their face on a camera. I mean, I have clients like that. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> I'm, I have an attorney that I've been coaching uh, for a couple of months now because she hates she's so uncomfortable in front of the camera so i've actually had to, i'll have to talk to her for like 15 20 minutes and turn the camera on while we're talking but a lot of people are like that but you don't have to do video of yourself you can do a video of the item you know um, Correct, whatever yeah. you're you can have pointed at the art and just talking over the top of it so the people that are really shy and don't want to be on camera don't have to be so it's so awesome um well, and you, we can go down this rabbit hole even, a while and we don't even have to talk if, if you wanted to like show your art you yeah show your art show it with text, yeah. show it with music. So it mm -hmm. kind of allows you not to go, well, I don't want to talk. I don't want to be seen. I could still yeah. participate. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Which is really, Definitely. really, that's what's, that's what's great. And I'll tell you, that's in matter of fact, that's the key to retention is participation. If people aren't showing up, if people aren't doing things, if people aren't having fun, they're not going to continue to come. So you need to make sure that when people come to events that they're having fun, and if you don't see people showing up, you need to reach out to them. You know, you need to nudge them a little bit, remind them why they enjoyed it. And maybe you need to maybe you need to bring them out for drinks or something outside <laughs> of an event before you drag them to an event again. I mean, yeah. there are things you have to do sometimes, and that makes a, you know, just have to be aware of it when people start to wander off. Because I've wandered off and then come back. You know, mm -hmm. that's happened over the years. We all do. I've done that. We can't all, yeah. Yeah, we can't, we don't all maintain the same participate. Yeah, because you were gone for about three or four years and then you came back and been back yep. for about 20 years now, we decided. So <laughs> well, I Which think is, it'll be like 22 ish, yeah, yeah. 21 and a half in November. Yeah. It, it is, it is crazy to think that it's closing. I mean, it'll be 30 years. I mean, for me, the next year, it's pretty crazy to think that it's been that long, but it's, um, I remember, I mean, I remember back when I started that uh, when I'd hear that somebody's fought for 10 years, like, oh, my God, they fight forever, you know, or 20 years of forever. And yeah. now it's like, you know, the average at our fighter practice is 
probably 20 years. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. at least at least 15. And um, mm-hmm. and that's counting the guys that are only fighting for three years. That's what brings it down a bit. Or <laughs> even know? a year. So, yeah. We have, we have in, in the local group, somebody who's been playing less than a year. You know, he brings that average way down. <laughs> yeah, that, that it helps. It, and that's I think that's the thing about, ret- you know, when we're talking retention is just we need to try to get that that excitement in the eyes of people that have seen it, who think they've seen it all. Because the SCA is so broad, none of us have seen it all. You know, mm-hmm. that's the thing we forget about is there's so much going on. There's always something else for you to do. Some other way you can become a part of it. So uh, some other way you can contribute to your group. I mean, there's, especially now, I mean, there's so many great ways to do it. And especially as we were discussing for introverts, there's so many additional ways that they can really participate and and get something out of it. And then all the things that are available to learn. I just, I'm so thrilled with all the stuff that's come out <laughs> online, so. So what are some strategies that you implement for um, members, regardless of how long they've been playing from the day one newcomer, Okay. At, you know, first event to, Okay. 40, uh, 50. Everybody, um, everybody wants to be involved. You know what I mean? It's like, just because somebody's standing off on the side does not mean they don't want to be involved in helping with something. It might just be helping carry chairs. It might just be helping some lady carry something in from her vehicle. I mean, I found that if you ask people to help, they do. And But when you ask them to help, you don't tell them to do it. You ask them to help. You find out who they are. You ask if they, you know, if it's some, especially with newer people, you new people, you want to get involved immediately. You want to get them doing something. You want to get them into a craft theater, even if it's just just doing service. You want to get them involved as quickly as you can. And if they're if they show interest in something, you get them to the person that is has that. That's with with newer people, especially. You have to make sure you do that. And you need to make sure when they come to events that they're treated you know at their seventh event the same they were at their first that you make sure that they have people they're talking to and if they need to know you know if they're looking for anything you bring them to those people because every event's a little different and you just and it's everybody's job i'm sorry i'm pointing now Um, it's everybody's job (laughs) it's it's your job too i mean it's not just the job of the officers it's not just the chatelaine's job it's everybody's job and you know we all we've all been guilty of it we get in our little clusters and we're, you know, it's our friends. These are, these are people I've known for 25, 30 years, you know, so you <laughs> see them and, and a lot of them, you only see you a couple times a year, three, four times a year. So you're happy to see them and you're in a corner, you're talking and you, you forget about the people that are off over there and you need to make a point of going and talking to those people. And that's what I think, you know, a lot of groups that have gotten stagnant have forgotten about that. They've forgotten mm-hmm. to drag those people in. And sometimes those people that need to be drugged back in aren't the new people. The people who have been playing for years, but maybe something changed, something changed in their life. Maybe, you know, and maybe they can't fight anymore because of injuries and they don't feel like they belong because they, you know, they have bad knees and they can't fight armored, so they don't want to come. Mm-hmm. Well, you drag them in, show them how to get involved in other aspects of the SCA. The beautiful thing is there's so many aspects of the SCA that everybody can get involved. There's something for everybody. Service is awesome. As a matter of fact, I went yeah, years ago. I um, I was down in San Diego, went to an, down there, and um, uh, my dad was having surgery, and I flew down, and it was pre 9 11, so it was easy to bring your armor with you. It wasn't much of a pain as it is today, and I brought that along, and I just had him drop me off, and he goes, "Do you know anybody here?" I said, "Nope, but I will shortly," and I just <laughs> set my stuff down, and I just I just saw people carrying stuff, and I just started carrying stuff and talking to the people that were there, and and literally, I mean, it was. I worked with one guy for probably 20 minutes before he goes, yeah, I haven't seen you in the group for how long you been in the group. I'm like, going, 45 minutes, <laughs> you, know, so, <laughs> I'm you know, and, uh, and, and that's what I was willing to do, you know, I mean, and we need to remind people that, you know, just jump in and help out. And, um, but it is our jobs as office is our jobs to bring those people in and do that. I was willing yeah. to do that on my own. Cause that's just, how I am, but you know, so I just jumped in and I was involved in stuff all day long, but not everybody will do that. So you need to be able to no. pull those people in. Um, I was at a, uh, I was at a conference, uh, this whole last couple of weeks been crazy. I spent at a conference <laughs> for a week down in, in Orlando and 
a friend of mine, her and I are there, and um, we just made a point of every time we went to a meal, if we saw somebody by themselves, we grabbed them and drug them along. We need to nice. do the same thing. And yeah, and do, we have to do the same thing in the SEA. It's like if we say somebody that is sitting by themselves or looks a little, you know, not sure, grab them, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, invite well, them along, you know, or get them with it, somebody, it, even if they don't come. And it doesn't you. hurt just to make that, hey, I'm so and so, you know, nice yeah. to meet you. Would you like to go do this thing that we're going to go do? Yes. It takes absolutely. Two sec- I, that's one of the strategies, you know, having known you for so long that yeah. I've always kind of implemented was that make sure you go and say hello to everybody, regardless of how long they've played, even if yeah. it's just a hello, because that yeah. one point of contact could be something that would trigger a, a huge opportunity or a huge moment for you all. Absolutely. So, like, and- I know of I mean, like an say, event where there's an yeah. individual where nobody but you and I said hello to that individual. And they remembered yeah. that you and I said hello to that individual. Yeah. And they felt yeah. until you and I said hello, they felt kind of the outsider and unwanted. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, it makes a huge and, impact. Yeah. And, and um, I'm going to speak for myself, but I believe a lot of people listening to this fit into this. But we were the awkward kids in high school. You know what I mean? We were not good at meeting people. And we were drawn to this because we wanted to be somebody else. I mean, we wanted to be the knight in shining armor or, you know, instead of the uh, button up shirt, um, you know, we were drawn <laughs> to that, you know, and that, but, but we weren't necessarily the most, you know, I, I forced myself because um, through business, I forced myself to become mm-hmm. more comfortable speaking and getting out. But um, I didn't come in that way. You know, I love being a merchant because people came to me. But Mm -hmm. we all need to remember that so many people in the group are not, you know, they need to be asked and invited in. And, you know, it's once people are in, they need to be reminded. (laughs) They need to be reminded that they're they should be part of the group. And I think even more so, I mean, especially, um, you know, peers, peers of the group should be acting like peers. Everybody in the group should be inviting, but peers should be acting as peers. We need to make sure that. You know, people are getting, we're giving attention to other people while we're there. I think too many, and I'll say us, we get caught up hanging out with our buddies and we <laughs> need to remember to, to go check that, go talk to people, the people around the edges, you know, mm-hmm. go see how they're doing. You introduce yourself, you know, bring them back, yes. you know, and drag them into things. Yeah, it's, we need to be reminded to do that. And and we forget the, the peer fear that's out there. There are people that have been playing for years that have never actually talked to a king or a queen. You know, I mean, yeah. there are people, and it especially depends on where you are in the, in, in the world. I mean, we, um, when I was uh, center show of our group, we hadn't had a peer in our group for like seven or eight years. I mean, we hadn't had a king or queen come to our group in years. Mm-hmm. So we actually even did a mock court just so people would know what to do at a court because we had a whole bunch of new people and mm-hmm. nobody knew what to do. You know, we had to do that, but we need to remember mm-hmm. those of us who've been playing for a while. We forget that. I mean, because I mean, definitely. Yeah, you know, I mean, like you and I, we've known every virtually every king or queen of Artemisia for you know the last twenty years have been friends of ours. But um, uh, we're not. You know, some people aren't that way. And peer fear. I mean, no. there are people that have been playing a long time that are still a peer fear. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah <laughs> Sean, Tim, or Basil. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, that's, they're all part of my. Part of my the lineage I'm part of has pretty much been every other king of Artemisia. So if not two out of Close. every three kings of Artemisia, well, it, it's um, either like part of the lineage or like <laughs> you know the, the uncles of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely, absolutely. With yeah, go all the going back to Brian. Uh, but so nope. um, I just I keep saying this over and over, and I'll tell you what: that at at its simplest, retention is just paying attention to people and remembering that people want. They they want to be touched. They want not physically touched. Uh, some of Consent. us out there, you got to remind got to remind that. Uh, but Consent. but no, people want to be talked to, and and even if they're not somebody you would normally talk to, chat with them. You know, check in, see how they're doing, seeing if they're enjoying themselves. I mean, I think that's the one thing that gets forgotten is we forget that even if somebody's been playing for a while, you chat with them. You know, um, I I mean, I try to chat with everybody. I mean, I at least stick my head over and say hello you know, and just see how people are doing. And I, I've always been very aware of the people on the sidelines, because I was that guy. I mean, I was that guy. So I'm very aware if I see somebody on the sidelines, I'll 
check in on them, see how they're doing. And, you know, and, but that goes all the way through. I mean, there are people that have been playing on and off for a decade, you know, or especially people that kind of, they dip their toe to come back in. They kind of need to be led back in and introduced to people. And, um, and you have to be a little aware too, also of ages. I mean, you know, some 20 year old does not want to sit down and chat with me and a bunch of other 50 year olds necessarily, unless it's about a specific thing, you know, so if you have, right. it's always nice to have younger folks, you know, a, a range of ages in a group. And I mean, that can get tough if a group gets old, you know, if everybody in the group is older, it becomes tough because it's tough for a bunch of 50 year olds to identify with what they were like when they were in their 20s. And we forget that, oh yeah, we were crazy. We did all, we did stupider shit than their part, stupider stuff than they're doing now back in our 20s. And um, like- uh, uh, <laughs> That's a secret. Uh, this, yes. <laughs> Well, no, I, uh, I somebody had posted the other day about a, a there's no game, that's, but there's about a game that's a drinking game that they were playing. And she's like, that's the stupidest game I've ever seen. SCA drinking game I've ever seen. And I'm like, yeah, you haven't seen, uh, you haven't seen some of the ones we did back in the day. And uh, yeah, Fear and Magic Element <laughs> was not a smart one that they did. But uh, um, at its core, and then then making sure that uh, there are a lot of act you know, different activities going on that can, people can be involved with. I mean, having guilds within a group is awesome and making sure that people know they're invited. Because I think a lot of times people, well, yeah, they're doing that, but I've never done that before. I don't really know them. So we need, we need to make sure that people know they're invited to those. That everybody Not, is welcome. Everybody is welcome. And um, now, you will every once in a while run into some issues where you have personality issues with people and um, those you have to sometimes you have to walk through those and um, as that kind of comes down to an officer type of thing to handle that and i found as a as a manager that the best way to handle those is just to get people sat down and talk through it you know just to really understand what the issues are and see what you can do about it because um so when you that, yeah go ahead go ahead sorry <laughs> so when you, no, you do have ahead. those interpersonal communication yeah. issues that do happen. There are members yeah. that are not going to be friends. I mean, we're yeah. not asking as SCA members for all of us to be friends. We're asking no. for all of us to treat each other courteously with yeah, grace. Respectfully. Yeah. But when you have those issues, what is kind of the best strategy that you've used to, um, well, to the, kind of mediate the, the tension? Yeah. Well, there, I mean, there are two things that you do. One is you, you get them both to sit down and talk and you, you just you have a, a, a three person conversation to work through it and as much of it as you can and get people to understand, you know, so that everybody so that you do understand what's going on and work through that. And you um, it's always nice when you have neutral grounds for places, you know, um, back in the day, my house was always neutral. Even everybody knew that it's, it's like didn't matter what else was going on. It was neutral at my house. So um, that was nice to have. And, um, but you just need to sit people down and talk through it. Now, we're still not always gonna be friends, but we can always be friendly, you know? And it's like, we don't have to expect, you know, there, there are people that, I mean, if I didn't have, if the, the least amount of time I have to spend in their presence, the better, but that doesn't mean I don't say hi and I'm not polite to them, you know? Um, I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm a knight. I'm supposed to be, a, I'm a, I am a peer and I need to be a gentleman, you know? And in the SCA, we're all supposed to be gentlemen and ladies. So we should act like gentlemen and ladies, you know, as much as possible. <laughs> and, and we need to just, even if we don't like people, that's okay. We don't have to love everybody, but we need to at least be kind and, you know, treat everybody with respect because um, we don't always know what's going on in somebody's life. And we rarely know what's going on in somebody's life. So quite often, the person that's the most uptight, there's a reason. We just don't know what it is. So if we treat everybody with love and we treat others with love and respect, generally, they will, tr they will in turn treat others with more love and respect than they would normally do that. So I think that if we, that's what I have always tried to do. And getting, you know, when you're able to get people together that have issues and talk through it, generally, you can come to a consensus where they, they agree on, they may agree to disagree, but that's okay. They don't, they, they, you know, they don't have to love each other, but they need to not be inter, inter fighting with each other as much as possible. Well, and, uh, and and not 
poisoning the well and not spoiling yeah. the dream for everybody. I yeah. mean, there's a reason they're there. They're not there because they don't want to be there. They're there because they're choosing to be there, which means the other person's also choosing to be there as well. So yes. you, you have well, to, I you know, not uh, ruin the experience yeah. for everybody just because this one person cheeses you off. Right. And I, and, you know, it happens that, well, that's not how you play the game. It's like, well, that may not be how you play the game. You, play <laughs> but, you, know, you know, I mean, there are certain things that we want to stay with. You know, we have rules mm -hmm. that we, you know, there's an, there's a framework for the SCA that we, we play with it, but with, that's a pretty broad framework and we all have our own ways of enjoying the dream. So, I mean, if somebody wants to play it differently, they can do that, but they can't be mad if everybody doesn't play it their way. And same thing, you know, we can't be mad if everybody isn't playing it exactly the way we think they should. You know, I'm kind of mad we've got so darn many Norse people up here when I'm a Venetian, Italian. What's, why would <laughs> we have more Venetians? You know, no. um, but uh, I really don't care. I'm just joking. But, uh, you know, there are people, <laughs> he is. You know, he's joking. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's some parts of the country that are, they, everyone does one type of thing. I mean, when mm -hmm. I started, I was, a, I was Venetian because almost everybody was doing um, Highlander stuff. You know, the, 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 a lot of the people in locally were doing that. And even though I'm Scottish, I was like, oh, nah, I don't want to do what everybody else is doing because that's how I am. And, uh, but that's what, uh, we just need to realize that there's a lot of ways to play in the SCA and just make sure that everybody's enjoying it and having fun. There, and, and there, us older definitely. ones need to remember that we used to have wilder fun when we were younger, you know, we, we, we didn't go to bed at eight o'clock, you know, or, or quarter to 10, <laughs> you know, we stayed up well, late and we drummed and we drank and that was, that was what SCA was to us. That's all. It, but SCA, much like culture, uh, yeah. it has evolved. It is not yeah. what it used to be and it's not going no. to ever go back to what it was. Right. So right. for those older members who've been playing forever and remembering how it was, and kind of feeling like maybe the dream is tarnished. Do you have any advice for them to go forward and embrace the new SCA or the way the SCA has changed and evolved? Um, I think the, the I think well, part of it is um, something they're not going to want to hear is they need to just uh, they need <laughs> to stop being so uptight. Um, I think it's part of it because I think what happens is. We do, we improve things so much over, over the years. What we do today, what we wear today in garb, I mean, compared to what we used to wear. And I'm not just talking like me as a peer today. I'm talking about everybody, what we used to wear has changed dramatically because of what's available to us. But not everybody has money or skills. So they may not, so we can't, we can't look down at other people for what they're, for what they're wearing. If they're trying, we need to give them, we need to give them props for trying. I think that that is one of the issues that we see a lot is that people are mm -hmm. like, you're not playing it right. Well, you don't tell people that. I mean, what you need to do is just say, okay, at the, you need to show them how to do it better. You know, you need to, but we also need to, so many of us have lost, we've forgotten where we were. We've forgotten mm -hmm. what it was like for us. Pull out some of your early pictures of your events. Look at what you were wearing. Look at what your camp was like. You didn't have a pavilion. You didn't have a, a rope bed. You had a pub tent and a rolling mat. You know what I mean? And, you know, you had one tunic you wore all weekend. I mean, people need to, we forget that. So um, we need, yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, it's, but we, but we forget that. And I, I'm sorry, I, I apologize if I'm sounding rant, ranty and people are telling you this guy's a jerk. But, but I, uh -oh. think that's, I, I think that so many people, so many of us forget that, you know, what we have today is not what we had then. And it's not even what the peers had back then when a lot of us started. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so don't, and also we, you know, finances are very different. Some people can afford, you know, I mean, some people can afford really fancy stuff. Other people cannot. Some people are very skilled and are very smart about purchasing cloth and making things themselves. Many are not, you know, and we need to be, mm -hmm. we need to have a little bit more care and we need to care about each other more. And well, a, little, like a little grace with ourselves and with others yes. to not, ooh. You're, you're I'm tilting. sorry, I had to plug um, my phone in. Yeah, sorry about that. My, oh. my, my battery was starting to die. So now I'm going to have to hold it for a little bit here. So 
That's all okay. right. My fault. But I mean, give give people grace. You know, yes. let them play within their means. Don't push them to play outside their means. You know, help them find other ways to either develop the skill set or barter or trade with people that do. There are so many different ways you can play the SEA game. You yeah. don't have to play it just one way. And you choose how you want to play it. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. And I mean, there's also, I mean, there are types of personas that are easier to garb, you know, I mean, and are less expensive to garb. So you can look at it. That's another simple way to make changes. Um, mm -hmm. And, but with what we talked about earlier about the number of classes that are available now, learning, it's so much easier to learn, even if you can't, even if there isn't a group within your group that's doing something you want to learn about, you can find out about mm -hmm. it online. Definitely. But, but as, as group members, if we want to retain people, we make sure that we find out where somebody's at. We find out there. I mean, it really, I mean, the core of it comes down to touch base with people, even if they've been there a while, ask them how they're doing, ask them what they're interested in. If they have anything new that they're working, find out if there's anything new they're working on, find out if there's, if they're stuck on anything, find out if they have ideas and we can help people. Cause I mean, so much of it is just paying attention to each other. And we, we get stuck hanging out with the same people all the time. And you need to make a point of just inviting people into things. Cause right now, I mean, this, this COVID, this whole last year or so with COVID has been nuts. And um, there's some politics that have been involved as well. And, and that happens. We just try to, we do our best to just let that occur and move forward. You know, we'll eventually get through this and the world will go a little bit more back to normal, but, um, but, Definitely. <laughs> um, but that being said, we always need to just be, we need to just be kind and to respect people where they're at and help them move forward if they want. I don't, it's uh, to me, retention is retention. <laughs> retention is just attention. Okay. People stay if they're getting attention from other people. And I mean, positive attention. That's so mm -hmm. much positive attention, helping them find something they're interested in, bringing them along. I mean, even, even like, uh, if you're at a site and you're going to run into town to grab some food, you know, and you see somebody that's just at their campsite say, Hey, do you want to come along? And you drag them along. I mean, little things like that mean a lot to people and they remember that, you know, they remember those things. I remember that when people did that for me in the past. So making a point of doing that more and more and more, I think is really so much of it, so much of it. And I'll tell you what, if you've been playing for a while, get around a new person. I mean, hang out with a new person at an event because, seeing it through their eyes again gets you wanting to play more i mean it i think we forget yeah, definitely it, does absolutely and hey if you've been stuck <laughs> it for a long time and you haven't been talking to people become the chatelaine or a deputy chatelaine and force yourself to go talk to people if you're not going to do it otherwise because that's why we do this i mean that was the thing um, i'm hanging out with my daughter uh, at this con this weekend and she's dressed mm -hmm. up as uh uh Technoblade, thank you. She just reminded me. And so, which is a for those that don't know, it's a dream. It's a he's a Minecraft player, uh, YouTube streamer. And uh, for those that don't know, just ask your kids. They might they'll know. Who he is. <laughs> and uh, but uh, but she sees another girl dressed in the same way, and they're like so excited. And there's this whole group of them that are dressed up for the Dream SMP, and which is another a whole group of them. And they're all excited. And the look in their eyes reminded me of my look in my eyes when I saw Fighter for the first time. And when I saw my <laughs> girlfriend belly dancing the first time too. But, uh, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, you know, that was, and just the excitement they had, how much joy they had reminded me of that. If you haven't hung out with a new person, i sorry, I keep pointing. Um, but uh, <laughs> I'm pointing at myself when I do that too, because I see me on the screen. Um, <laughs> if you haven't hung out with a new person with them in a while, you need to do that. Because it's that joy, that excitement in their mm -hmm. eyes that sparks us back up too. I mean, it reminds us why we play is, and if, if a group doesn't have new people, that makes it really tough, but you need to be around new people because it gets too old hat. You know, you're hanging out with the same mm -hmm. people all the time. You're doing the same thing all the time. Hang out with some new people. It'll remind you why you joined the SEA to begin with. Definitely. We have a question for you. Fire away. As a knight, does your approach to retention differ when working with fighters versus non-fighters? um yes and no uh, yeah it's, um, 
Yes and no. Obviously, um, I make a point. Um, I especially at a fighter practice, I make a point of giving a, a, a newer fighter time. I always give them time, especially brand new fighters. Um, but mm -hmm. even even guys have been fighting for a while. I mean, when I'm at practice, I'm there to learn, and I'm there to teach. Um, so if somebody wants to, you know, somebody wants to learn, I'll spend. If they want to work on a shot, I'll spend time working with them on that. Mm -hmm. If they want to. If they want me to be throwing specific shots, I'll do that. You know, um, I will. So I definitely spend time with with fighters, no matter their age. I'll give them what they're looking for at the practice. I'll even tell them what I'm practicing. It's like, hey, today I'm working on uh, today I'm working on my off body slot. You know, just so they know what I'm working on, so then they can try and block it more or whatever. And um, so with fighters, I definitely will do that, and it's it's easier. And also with fighters, you make sure they have gear they need. You know, my my old set of armor, it's, I don't know, someone's got it. Um, cause I lo <laughs> loaded, loaded to a guy at fighter practice, you know, cause he needed it. So I suited him mm -hmm. up. I mean, it's, that's, that's probably the biggest thing at fighter practices. We make sure people have the armor they need. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have an armory, but I know the guys that do. So if somebody needs something made, I'm like, okay, I'll walk them over and introduce them to the guys that need it. And even mm -hmm. if they've been playing for a while, and they're not comfortable asking somebody, I'll drag them over. Our fighter practices, it's it's relatively small. So at our practice, um, I don't know. I, I guess we've had as many as a dozen at our practice. I mean, it's not that small, but um, for our part of the world, it's <laughs> it's a, it's a good sized practice for up here. And uh, and it's you know our uh, Damon's been king uh, a bunch of the, what the last what seventeen years now. It feels like <laughs> it, they, he just he finally got to step down, you know, with with COVID and such. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, we've had our king and a duke of practice, and we have a, a number of nights of practice. So mm -hmm. um, there are other people teaching as well. So, but making a point of that, and especially when you're doing a public fighter practice, making mm -hmm. a point of going and talking to people, making a point of making sure people are there. And if fighters aren't showing up, you can always reach out to them and check in mm -hmm. see how they're doing. Because sometimes somebody isn't coming to practice because the strap's broken on their helmet and they need help getting that fixed. So or that's they're in a bad headspace. Yeah. Or yeah, or or they just or they think somebody didn't like them because they bruised their leg. Or you know, I mean, <laughs> it, fighters, we're, we're a weird bunch because we don't get usually if usually when there's we it's our headspace is different. We, you know, usually we're we just get busy with other things. We're not normally as caught up. At least the, the armored fighters. Um, and uh, but with somebody that's a non-fighter, um, I I probably am more of a bring them to the right people person. Um, mm -hmm. I make a point of talking to them. Um, I make a point of, you know, understanding what they're interested in. And I make a point of bringing them to people. I also, um, even with guys have been playing for a while, when I'm at an event, if I make sure that if people need help moving stuff, I grab guys to do it. I thank them for doing it. Guy, and I almost always grab guys, but ladies will jump in too. But I, because usually there's guys standing around talking, so I'll, I'll grab them and say, "Hey, let's go help so and so empty your empty your van," or "Let's hey, I need some help moving these tables," and I'll mm -hmm. ask them. But you always ask, don't tell. And I think that's something that I've I've done that before. It's like, "Hey, we need those tables moved," and I realize, well, mm -hmm. I'm the guy being the jerk in that case. But making sure that people are involved, because so often people get tired of playing because they're not getting drawn in. They're not being brought in to do mm -hmm. things. They are just. They feel like they're just on the side, you know, or, or that they're forgotten. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's where the people you lose, the people that feel forgotten, you know, they feel that nobody, you know, nobody really cared if they were there, but if you just make a point of checking in with them, Hey, mm -hmm. you, I mean, I'll tell you what, somebody that's not normally involved in things, you grab them and Hey, maybe you'll help them in the kitchen. Maybe you'll sit at a roll, but get them involved in some place where they are meeting new people makes a big difference for people because even somebody's playing for a number of years because quite often the person they came in playing with is no longer playing maybe they moved or maybe they got divorced the divorces are really an interesting one because um you know because like well that you're not going to like me because you know i'm not married to so-and-so anymore i'm like still in the sca as far as i'm concerned you know as long as you mm -hmm. as long as you two are nice to each other at the site we, i don't care you know it's like let's you're still here to play what do you want to do i mean mm -hmm. i think that uh I think that, so for me, that's how it is. I think that a lot of people mm -hmm. need to be the same way. We just, as, especially as peers, we need to make a point of asking. And we always need to remember, ask. <laughs> and, and never forget, please and thank you. Okay? Well, um, and even as a non-peer, it's still I mean, important 
to have those pure like qualities that you are portraying and you know it, showing in your actions because you don't want to be that person that is somebody's villain in their story you don't want to be yeah. the person that ruins an experience for people so striving to become better than you are in your behavior is definitely mm -hmm. a huge kind of added bonus for retention like it's not just uh, the peers right absolutely and, and the reality is caring <laughs> about other people i mean we, a lot of us don't really care about other people but we have to teach ourselves to care about other people um it's it's and i know that we we feel it's like well we're just here because i want to have fun with my friends it's like well that's great but remember when you started you know how it was i think that once again we forget we all have to remember how it was when we started and keeping people in and and when people have wandered off and they come back, we need to make sure that you pull them back into the fold and make sure they know that they're, they're comfortable and they're wanted, you know, because I too often we get caught up, you know, we get caught up in our own thing and we get caught up in our own clicks. It happens, mm -hmm. you know, our households, it happens. Um, you're not always going to be able to bring somebody along with you to how, to things, but you make sure that they understand why they're not be if they're not being invited, make sure they understand why mm -hmm. it's like, Sorry, I'm gonna. I'm going back with the king, and we're gonna be working on some scrolls or talking to you. I'm helping him herald or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But hey, uh, nice chat with you or whatever, you know. You need to understand that and just be aware of it too. So, um, well, and, and and that explanation, spending that five seconds to say, "Hey, yeah. I love chatting with you. I need to go do some business and help the you know their majesties prepare for court." Yeah. Afterwards, we can continue this, you know, or at a later date or time goes a huge long way it, it does and and it's um it's so important for us i mean if we want our want our groups to grow and you know we don't grow if we don't keep the people we have um and i think that a, a group that really wants to continue to grow you need to also look at okay well what can i teach you know what can i help people with what what is what is my art or science you know what can i help people with because whereas mm -hmm. you know for me i mean fighting is my art you know but but um but well service, i mean to ser services, services too, is your art too yeah i mean you are a knight but that doesn't mean yes. that you don't embrace that particular form of art yeah. and you also voice herald which is an actual arts and science mm -hmm. so i mean it, it's not like you just do just one thing and only the one thing well, and I think that that's, that's probably the thing for people too. If, if, and I kind of touched on it earlier, but as a player, if you're getting a little, if you feel like you're getting stale, try something new because there's the SCA is so big and so broad, you know, pick up a drum, you know, I mean, I learned years ago that if you had a drum in your hand, you got a front seat, front seat at the bonfire where all the gals were mm -hmm. dancing and they gave you a drink. So I learned how to drum, you know, I mean, whatever it is that you want to do somebody's doing it just just mm -hmm. learn it and and do it and have fun with it you know and um, i think that when you show interest when you show interest in what somebody else is doing they get excited you know and when, you, when if somebody's interested in something you're willing to share they get excited and i think that's what a lot of us have forgotten I'm, i i really say you need to see it through a new person's eyes as often as you can because like when i saw this mm -hmm. kid yesterday all excited to see each other's costumes and talking about it and giggling you know they're a bunch of teenagers but that's that was awesome just to see that and it totally reminded me of newcomers coming in and just that that awe in their eyes because we i don't know I, too many of us have forgotten we we need to be reminded of why we joined the sca i mean we need to be reminded of that and so often what we're doing today might not be why we came in you know, mm -hmm. and we forgot that we need to remember that it's, you know, uh, we need to remember that. I mean, that's I think that's the key to it is it's we didn't get into it to get too wound up in things <laughs> or to deal with politics with each other and all that. We came because we <laughs> wanted to dress up in cool clothes and hang out with other people dressed up in cool clothes. And, you know, some of us wanted to hit each other. Um, so but or some, <laughs> you know. Or they just want to wear really pretty clothes, you know. I mean, it just varies. But we came here for a reason, and we just need to remind ourselves of that. Because, and groups need to remind each other of that too. I think that we all just need to do it. We all need to make it our job to remind each other, not just the leaders of groups, but everybody within mm -hmm. a group, to remind each other. 
And now there are going to be times where you have somebody that is somebody that is always just causing problems. And some those people are the hardest ones to deal with. And there are going to be so there are every once in a while there's going to be a weed you got to pull. I mean, and but that's a lot less often than you may think, because quite often the most curmudgeon folks out there, once they're showing a little bit of attention and they're giving something to do, are the most productive members of our group. And we need to remember that because um, because sometimes they're kind of curmudgeon and they're doing their thing because nobody's nobody cares, you know, and um, I think as leaders within a group, we need to remember that, too. Um, because there are there are people. I'll tell you the people. It's like ex fighters are some of the worst curmudgeonly ones because they're not <laughs> fighting anymore and they need to be reminded why they got into it. You know, um, they need to be reminded why they love the SCA and maybe that's helping with training. Maybe that's doing something mm-hmm. completely different. I mean, I know a number of nights that that started doing rapier fighting when they could no mm-hmm. longer do the armored combat. They they tried rapier out. Now they may not. Some of them. You know, some of them continue to do it a long time and get serious about it. Others, it's just kind of a fun thing to do. Others get into archery. Others go completely different direction, get into scribal arts. Or I keep saying scribal because, because you're oh. a scribal. Oh, <laughs> you know? oh you, you're calling me out as, as out. an apprentice but, to a scribal laurel. I get it. <laughs> yes, that's why I keep <laughs> saying that. But, I mean, there's so many things to do that maybe sometimes we need to just get nudged into something else or something different. And... Um, you know, because we forget. I mean, I, I, I know I've said some of the same things over and over and over, but at its core, it's just we need to care about other people and we need to remember to stay excited about this and help other people get excited about it. And, and, and not always stay in our cliques. Invite people to sit with us. Invite people to come join the conversation. Bring them to conversations that they might want to be involved in. You know, um, Definitely. that's all part of it. Perfect. Gosh. <laughs> you just covered like pretty much all of my questions. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Thank right. you, that, that Mistress was... Penelope, who's also Her Excellency Penelope, as she is a landed baroness right now. That's right. <laughs> That's right. She is currently the, the... yes. <laughs> baroness of Bronzeholm. Yes. That's right. Cur- Which... Currently our baroness. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm like, my brain is like, is it them or is it them? Which is really bad because they're all my friends. So it's been well, my I mean, friends for decades. We, <laughs> well, and that's the thing too. Like just because you have a household doesn't yeah. mean you can't remember what it was like to not have a household, yeah. it, you know, and go, Hey, this person doesn't have anybody. They're brand new. Let's not make them feel like they have nobody. Because that's not okay. Um, and um, also, I mean, not to keep hammering on this, but, you know, if you have room in your car, toss somebody, hey, I'm going to an event. Who needs? I have extra space. Who wants to come along? I mean, because there are many events where I was that extra guy. I mean, speaking of Mistress Penelope, I mean, I was like, you know, <laughs> I was one of, I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll go along with you guys, you know, and uh, they, I rode along with them. I mean, mm-hmm. um Doing that or invite people. somebody to an event that's outside their wheelhouse. Like, hey, you're a fighter. I'm going to go to this um, arts and science collegium. You want to go with me? I've got room. Yeah. Just because you're a fighter doesn't mean that you wouldn't be interested in going. You know, make yeah. that offer. Keep it open, that opportunity, and let that person choose. Yeah, it's absolutely important that everybody everybody gets that opportunity and just remembering, I mean, and once again, it's not always just the new people you want to check in on and invite them along. I mean, I've had some wonderful conversations with people on road trips that I hadn't talked to at other, at any other, you know, really had talked very little with. And then you get six hours in the car with somebody, you get to know somebody really well. And that's what's great about what we do is we get a chance where most of us wouldn't be, most of us don't come from the same type of life, same type of work, mm-hmm. you know, but when we're playing together, we're all the same. I mean, some of us have, but I mean, we're really all the same. I mean, <laughs> even though we've been playing longer or whatever, we're all, we're all the same and we need to remember that. Definitely. Well, do you have any 
big closing thoughts that you want to share with everybody here um, besides caring for everybody because we know that yeah i've, I've said that many important. many times um i would um i would just challenge anybody that watches this to be aware of those people on the sidelines even if they've been playing a while be aware of them check in on them see how they're doing think of some people that haven't been been to an event for a while and, and or not event you haven't seen at any anything local in a while check in on them, see how they're doing you know maybe if you learn to grab grab a drink or go to lunch just see how they're doing um cha i challenge you to do that because that's how you'll get your group back together i mean it's a you can pull people back in that way um and groups having less formal i mean local formal events or things where people can just come to i think it's always a great thing and Dragging people back in that haven't played in a while is a great way to do it. Uh, I was, uh, uh, many years ago uh, in college, I was uh, initiated into a fraternity. Well, literally two of us were initiated and all the other guys that were in the group were leaving. So there was two of us. Well, we had to go find, so I made a point of finding there's a number of guys on campus that had been in the group that had been, there were fraternity members, but weren't part of the fraternity. So I made a point of finding out all of them. And I tracked them all down and I got about half of them to come come be part of the group again and get involved. You can do the exact same thing with your group, your SCA group. Track people down. I mean, it's so easy with Facebook these days, but track people down and drag them back in, invite them back into things and make a point of, you know, if we need to grow our group, this last year and a half has not been good for us. And what we need to do is make a point of reaching out to people, checking in on people, bringing them in, introducing people to all the wonderful new online assets that are available for anything they're interested in and pointing them that direction um and as i said before spend some time with new people i mean remind yourself why we do this we love doing this because you know we all walked in and we had those the the you know starry eyes when we did this we need to remember that and i think that that's i think we forget it and we're too close to it and um those of us that have you know, we've spent a lot, especially a lot of time hanging around. We're in the Royal Room all the time, you know. Um, we forget some people there have never talked to the, the king and queen or never talked to anybody with a hat, you know, and they don't, it's so be, be aware of that. Because I mean, and so often, I mean, there are people that have played for 10 years and never gotten their AOA. That's the other thing for retention. Actually, this is something, this is another important thing. Remember to put people in for awards because Definitely. Always put there, people in. Always people rat out all your friends. Yes. Always rat out people that you don't know when you see them do something amazing. There, there is nothing worse to some for somebody that feels now they may not always be one hundred percent correct, but you know they they show up all the they show up and they do help you know at least when asked. But they're there and mm -hmm. they've done it for years and and they don't get, they feel they don't get any recognition that can get her, people can get bitter from that. And you need to be aware of that and enter people, put people in for awards. I mean, someone's been playing for several years and they're actually, they should get an AOA. You know what I mean? You should put them in for it. I mean, understand that there's a reason. I mean, our Kings and Queens, I mean, almost every kingdom out there, they're not getting awards. And especially when you're talking bigger kingdoms like ours, there are people that, don't, I mean, there are people that can't afford to travel as, you know, a long way. So when a king and queen is coming to your area, make sure that the people, that, especially the ones you know, don't travel a lot, but everybody mm -hmm. is getting put in for it. You know, that you put yeah. people in rewards because too many kings and queens, they, they don't know the local people, you know, mm -hmm. especially in the larger, the larger groups, but actually all the groups, even the, even the, the smaller geographical, Geographically, places have lots of people. So you need to make mm -hmm. sure that you put people in for awards because that's that's important. Because when people get attention and recognition, um, they're going to stay. They're more likely to stay. And you definitely don't, because people, I can't tell you how many people, well, you know, I played for four years and I, I don't play anymore because I saw all these other people get awards. Now, some of that is their own problem. I realize that. Some of that is their own problem. But, um, Part of that is also our problem as peers. We're not making sure people are getting recognized. And we need to, and it's not just peers. Anybody can put people in for awards. Don't Anybody. put yourself in. Don't put yourself in for awards. You know, no, don't, but, don't sniff but, for yourself. <laughs> I mean, tooting you know, your own horn's great, but uh, no, not for awards. <laughs> have, have some humility. 
but no, but put other people in. And it's there's nothing cooler than seeing somebody, some that you know, get an award that you put them in for. You know, or yeah. or even having or having a royal come up and say, "Hey, I saw you put so and so in. I don't know much about them. Can you tell me a little bit more about them?" And and you tell them a little bit more about them, and they go, "Okay, thank you." You know, or hey, or um, introducing, or, yeah, you know. Not only have you put them in for an award, but you've made that human connection of introducing them physically to that particular reigning royal. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, once yeah. again, there are there are people been playing for a long time that have never actually talked to a reigning royal. You know, um, which which is a little sad, but it's it's the truth, and we just need to be more aware of that. And um, definitely, I I know many royals that are amazing at it. I mean. Uh, I think that is not a problem in our kingdom, not a very big problem in our kingdom, at least anymore. It used to be, we used to feel, we used to joke around that we, we could be using bazookas and, uh, you know, and Kevlar up here, nobody would care. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, but, but uh, so back to we're here really quick. Yeah. Bronze Helm is far, far northeastern Artemisia. Like we are the most eastern point of Artemisia. Yeah. And the closest group is three hours away. Uh, generally, it's at least like a six to 10 hour drive if we want to get to some of the bigger groups in our kingdom. So backstory why bazookas and Kevlar, it felt that way. Well, because we, <laughs> we hadn't seen royalty in, in years, many, many years. So. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Yeah, yeah, uh, KK Productions yeah. does not condone the use of bazookas and Kevlar yeah, in or, or martial combat. For, for the record, they were they said flamethrowers. They didn't say bazookas, but bazookas what came out. I, we rolled with it. But uh, flamethrowers are bad too. But flamethrowers are not allowed either. But um, being I'm in the pretty middle sure of nowhere, if you read uh, the, the the martial handbooks, that's that's not allowed. They're not in there. Not in there. <laughs> not, not, now, don't listen to Timmer because he'll have his own own opinion on whether or not we can use flamethrowers. But, uh, um, but no, I think uh, we just need to remember that people, especially people in the outer, because like I go to I go to events in the um, in North Shield, which is mm -hmm. because there's North Shield events that are closer for us than Artemisia events, and we have people from North Shield that come here. Which I'm sitting in North Shield right now, but I'm ten hours from home here. But there's there's groups that are within four or five hours of of Bronze Helm there so yeah. um but just being aware of that i think that uh um there are a lot of groups that have seen royalty so make sure you put people in especially if you have royalty coming and i know we're we're coming up on our hour here but uh yeah those i think those are you know pay attention to people care about other people be around people that are excited about it and remind yourself why you got involved in it um try something new if you feel you're getting stale um do something you haven't done if you haven't done if you haven't Put on an event, put on an event. Uh, if you haven't helped out in the kitchen, go help out in the kitchen, you know, do something different. D do service or or get into a new art or try a new fighting. D do something different if you feel you're getting stale and make a point of always reaching out and helping people. You know, the, the reason yeah. everything has gotten better, the reason fighting has moved up so well is because we've had guys out there that were make a point of teaching. You know, guys like Sean, the, the Duke Sean that are out there traveling and training his majesty, people and there's an, his ma oh you're right his majesty sean sorry <laughs> you've known somebody you know since they were 20 years old um, <laughs> known somebody for 30 years um but no i think that um uh everything has gotten better and it's because we we've, we've all helped each other up and we just need to remember to do that with everything we just need to make us make a point of reaching out to others to bring them in and keep them in and that's how we that's how we get our, our groups get better and they're more fun Definitely. Well, uh, do you have an SCA shout out to anybody in the known world that you would like to do a shout out to? Um, like our house. <laughs> well, of course, I, I, <laughs> have to shout out. Horn. <laughs> I, I have to shout out to Duke Damon, you know, Damon and Duchess Veronique, because since it's he's my knight and uh, the head, heads of our household, love those guys, love all of you guys. I, and I'm looking forward to your wedding here in a couple of weeks. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you're, you're your man. I'd love the two of you. Um, no, really, just uh, um, no, uh, those are my shout outs. I guess those are my shout outs. Just, and I love that you're doing this. Um, it's awesome. I think we all just need to be reminded of why we did this. And these types yeah. of things 
having this available to us is so great. So I love well, it. And my shout out this week is to Sir Rifkin, uh, who has posted some of the most amazing uh, costuming art online, along with shield painting in the last week. I have been awed and inspired. So thank you, Rifkin, from the bottom of my heart. You are amazing. Um, <laughs> coming up, uh, looks like we've got on 10-6, the sisters interview uh, with Lady Hedora uh, will be online. And we also have on 10-8, Coach's Corner uh, Roundtable Show. So you want to catch that for sure. But on 10-10... Coffee with Cal. He is going to dive into the magical arts with Asklak the Awful. Who, and I will tell you, he's a patent pending laurel. He is not awful in any way, shape, or form, but incredible. Um, also, patent pending Pelican as well. Ah, okay, so, that, yes, that's right. <laughs> pretty freaking phenomenal. And so well deserved. And then on 1017, I will be absent, but his most excellent of excellencies, Baron Cal, has decided he will guest host with our uh, special guest, Duke Timur of Artemisia. <laughs> Expect uh, fun and excitement and possible chaos to potentially ensue. Um, that flamethrower comment, uh, yeah. At the time, Duke Timmer was majesty, and he was lighting a fire because somebody did give him a flamethrower. It may or may not have been the best idea. He yes. is definitely adequate. Yes. Depending yes. on the day. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, Cal. Well, you'll be all right. I, I, I promise I will return as quickly as I can from Crown Tourney so that uh, I can take back over the show. <laughs> All right. Well, we want to thank everybody who joined us today and commented, listened. Looks like I've got a bunch of great material that I'm going to have for future shows. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.